Hey there. Uh, we say the word spooge a lot in this episode. We are talking about a character, a, 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 a character's chosen name for themselves is, is spooge. I don't know if we make that especially clear. Uh, but, uh, it is, uh, you know, and at a certain point, it felt so ridiculous. We need to felt the need to highlight it. So yeah, we're, we're talking about a, a named character, not just the, you know, the, the, the reproductive product. Uh, all right, there we go. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Best Quality Vacuum, the duck feed show about the extended Vince Gilliverse. Freaking bad. <laughs> El Camino. Better call Saul. Yeah. I like the little, the little uh, tilde you put over the end there, El Camino. It's not it. right, but it's, yeah. It could be right if the car is small enough. <laughs> El, El, Cam- El Camito? I, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how that El conjugates. Camino. Mm-hmm. Uh, it sounds small. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I can't wait to talk about El Camino. That's a good movie. Yeah, yeah, it'll be. I mean, better call Saul. I've been uh, YouTube has been <laughs> serving up clips. Oh geez, I, I've been been being seeing a bunch of uh, mm. uh, of uh, stuff. That's yeah, Oof. yeah. Uh, um, it'll be fun. This, we got we got our work cut out for us. We do. Uh, even today, like we're talking about a pretty standout episode here, uh, Peekaboo. Uh, originally written, or it was written by Jay Roberts and Vince Gilligan, and it was directed by Peter Maydak and originally mm-hmm. aired in April 12th of 2009. Uh, a real high watermark for me. Yeah. Big standout episode. Yeah. Uh, this is about Jesse trying to reestablish his street cred, uh, going after the drug addicts that stuck up Skinny Pete in the last episode. Yeah. Uh, and giving us the primary plot for this, and it, which is also effectively a bottle episode kind of thing. Because we spend most of our time uh, in the house of Spooge and Lady Spooge. Uh, <laughs> house of Spooge. <laughs> house of Spooge. <laughs> yeah, like, I didn't name like them. the House of Blues. I mean, like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> um, Are we so vain? <laughs> <laughs> what is this, the Ritz? <laughs> uh, the, uh, yeah, you know. we we occasionally duck out for something that that, that is pretty major, but also I, I I think is a distraction from the uh, real tense and good stuff in this, which is um, uh, Walt's lie about Gretchen and Elliot, his former business partners. Uh, you know, he had told uh, Skyler that they were supporting his cancer treatment. Mm-hmm. Not true, uh, and uh, that falls apart because. Yeah. Uh, Walt didn't necessarily think it and think it through entirely. Um, th- this, I, I, I think I disagree that this is uh, unwelcome distraction. Okay. Like personally, like I, I think that uh, this is important plot wise yes. and it helps the spooge storyline go down a little <laughs> easier by having yeah. little breaks where you come up for air. I you think so. Almost yeah. like literally like it's, it's so gross. Mm-hmm. The, the spooge storyline. Um, that God, if nobody knows that's a name of a person, this just sounds like we're talking about those pure Isle show. Like, yeah, well, it's actually the spooge storyline has a lot of deep themes. You know, I mean, put, ask girls too. pussy prison actually has a bunch of <laughs> deep <laughs> themes in it. Uh, the spooge storyline is actually incredibly moving, um, <laughs> but I, it, it's a, uh, it does feel a little weird. I think I'm a little bit less, uh, than a lot of gen pop people. Like I love, I like the episode fly of the show a mm-hmm. lot. I'm yeah. not as impressed by like a bottle episode on its own. It feels a little stunty, mm-hmm. you know, to, to me, like I, I prefer that, you know, kind of checking in on and moving all the plots forward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, generally. Um, yeah. Fly is cool, but it's cool because, uh, it's the one episode of the show. Yeah. You know, yeah. It would not be cool if it were, a couple episodes a season, I think. Yeah. What we get is really good. I mean, we get one of like one of the better, like uh Walt performance scenes that we've seen so oh, yeah. far. Um, I mean, a few of them actually, because when he comes, home, when he comes, yeah, when he comes home, comes home and uh, and uh, tells the new lie, uh, that is yep. also amazing facial acting that goes there. I, I mean, I, I, I guess uh, I don't know. I am so entranced by what happens over in Spooch Town that yeah. it's um it, it it is hard for me to kind of like focus on anything else. It's not like we are pulling away from Casa de Spooch to like check in on the shoplifting storyline or something. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's 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 none of that. We do get a voicemail from Marie. 
Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of the checking in on the, uh, but in general, uh, I, and also I, I always forget this as part of this episode, mm-hmm. right? Like the, the, the house de spooge is mm-hmm. certainly the, uh, the thing that's most memorable about this. Yeah. Uh, commentary, uh, not commentary podcast coming into its own a little bit. Cool. There actually are some, uh, production details that are interesting. Nice. Um, there's a lot of cuteness, uh, Vince Gilligan doing his impression of the knife guys. <laughs> uh, TV show that they license is really sweet. I had to um, triple check that that was not Vince Gilligan doing a cameo. Actually, it, 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 he reached out to the guys who actually do that knife thing and just asked it. And he's like, "Oh, did we? How much we pay for that?" He's like, "They just let us use it. They're cool guys." <laughs> uh, it's, it's very sweet. Um, the the cool uh, details is one they they scouted this um, as a hoarder house. They wanted to find a house that looked like this, hmm. and apparently, it was the most cat urine smelling place of all time it it, this person had a hoarder amount of cats and the whole house just smelled so strongly of cat urine which i think comes through on the screen yeah uh, pretty you know pretty well um the other production thing that i thought was interesting and and it takes a lot like production i I get lost when it's like oh he stuck a camera to a piece of glass Mm -hmm. you know that's how he did it but the actual logistics of some of the stuff is interesting Mm -hmm. um the child actors in this uh, twins. They hired twins, and the reason you hire twins for child actors is to get around child labor laws. Yep, you can only have a child work for three hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you hire twins, you get six hours. Yep, it, it makes if you get triplets, you get nine. Like it, it feels like <laughs> you just want to have like as many uh, you know identical broodlings as you possibly can for child <laughs> acting. Yeah, yeah. That was the, that was the big thing about the Olsen twins, right? Yeah, yeah. On a, yeah. uh, what was it Full House? Family yeah. house. Yeah. Family, family house, house fa- uh, TGI house. It's a, uh, yeah. So that, that was interesting. And it just, and kind of sweet, charming stories like, uh, yeah. Jesse, you know, Aaron Paul got along really well mm-hmm. with the kids. Uh, they were kind of buddies. Yeah. You know, it's real sweet. I, I mean, in terms of important things that are moved forward in this, you know, like this is the introduction of Jesse Pinkman as friend to all children. Yes. You Jess, know, Jesse, who is trying to want, he wants kids not to have the child that he had. Yes. You know, th- this is a great episode for Jesse being virtuous. Yes. You know, um, there was some discussion in the Slack a little bit about us being a little too hard on Jesse's parents, you know, in the, in the face of what they've had to deal with. Yes. And what I w- will admit about that is that I think that we do have perfect knowledge of knowing what kind of person Jesse is. Yes. That maybe they don't. Like, we have the full story, so we want them to give him more of a benefit of the doubt because mm-hmm. we know omnisciently that he deserves it. Yes. You know, they might not yeah. know that basically where they're at. You know, so <laughs> right. Kind of a fair cop. But mm-hmm. th- this is the kind of thing early on, you know, this, uh, my word is my bond. Like mm-hmm. there are things, there are, there are essential qualities to Jesse, yeah. you know, that make him a, one of the better characters on the show. He does some real shit. Mm-hmm. You know, he, d- he does some, he slips a lot, but oh, he, God, yeah. he has, he has room for redemption. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't find a lot of production trivia. I'm happy that the podcast is bearing fruit. The, uh, the official, um, Aaron Paul, I think rightly submitted this one as his, uh, uh, kind of Emmy, uh, you know, for Emmy consideration. He did get nominated, Mm -hmm. uh, for his performance here for best supporting actor, uh, lost out. I didn't check what he lost out to probably not as good as this. Um, uh, shit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah something like that <laughs> and I, I mean it was it was the time so time i don't know Bo- Bo- boston legal yeah, yeah. <laughs> just uh, just some yeah. some dog shit 24 guy i don't yeah. know um uh but uh i realized that we hadn't talked about other talked about other emmy stuff uh brian cranston won for uh the pilot episode of breaking bad which is crazy just knocked mm-hmm. out of the park first try um and uh vince gilligan was nominated uh, uh for directing the pilot as well Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Tinseltown. Mm. I'm to shine. The stars are out tonight. It's awardees. Um, good for the, yeah. I, I think that if I were, uh, I like to think, or so, so I realistically think that if I were in this, that industry, mm-hmm. I would give a shit about Emmys. Yes. You know, uh, it, it's all of my instincts are screaming. I wouldn't like if there were yeah. the potties, mm-hmm. you know, and we could win, win such a thing. Like I just feel like such a poser. Oh yeah. Like, deigning to care about such a thing i don't know mm-hmm. it, it, it feels very pathetic to me yeah like if we had to submit an episode no, to the bodies, no. like i'm just like i don't I, I this isn't for us we don't do this <laughs> nope you know uh this yeah. is weird and egotistical and, and gross and like it doesn't matter 
my you know? uh my mom held on to all of my like awards that I got like in school and and mm-hmm. stuff and I and I had given her like you know even like through college like hey here's this you know put her in your office show your kid amounted to something right sure. and um uh I got all those back when they moved and uh so I just I I didn't want to throw them away so I put them up in my bathroom okay yeah no, this is yeah. funny <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or burn them. I, I yes. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I have a very, uh, get rid of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. We, but we've I recognize I'm the that. outlier. Yeah. I, I think that it's good to destroy that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, personally, but again, yeah. not trying to make decisions for anyone else. Mm-hmm. Uh, let, let, uh, let Brian Cranston have his Emmy. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, there's also career concerns, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Those have a practical thing. Like, Winning that Emmy means more job opportunities, possibly, and mm-hmm. more money. So yeah. I get that part. I get the practical concern. I just the, there's a self importance to awards. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and and anything at Hollywood like we're honoring ourselves. Let's all yeah. you know pat the 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 shining stars on the back. That kind of stuff drives <laughs> me nuts. I'd rather not. Yeah, uh, yeah. the awardees. Uh, <laughs> let's get into it. Let's do. Uh, we have our cold open. Uh, Jesse yep. is, uh, standing on the street corner playing with a beetle, you know, letting yep. it crawl over his hand. He's just killing time waiting for, uh, uh, skinny Pete to show up. And when skinny Pete does show up, he steps on the steps on yep. the bug, uh, foreshadowing, mm. uh, skinny Pete, uh, has the address for spooge. Uh, there's a great little bit here. He's like, wait, he calls himself spooge. It's not like <laughs> diesel or D train. And then later <laughs> Jesse calls himself diesel. Yep. Uh, I love Jesse picking up language. You know, that that's a, a thing we've seen in his character trait, a uh, really deft little bit of writing, mm-hmm. um, you know, and his old lady doesn't have a name. It's just Spooge's lady, <laughs> you know, uh, skinny Pete, you know, uh, he says like, Hey man, you know, are you looking for a reason not to do this thing? As a, he's asking him about the address, you know, questioning everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he m- misspelled street, uh, yeah. in there as a kid. And, and he's like, I'll go do it, but I'm on probation. He's not no. going to do it. No. Um, Jesse is going to do it and he's, he's maths up to, uh, to get some strength. You know, <laughs> to, uh, it takes a hit of courage. Yep. <laughs> you know, and cut the title as he walks toward the house. Um, and you know, we come right back to him there. He's pounding on the door, rolls of <laughs> rolls away to the side, like solid snake and is practicing, yep. <laughs> you know, he's, he's still right in the meth high, uh, practicing many different deliveries of where's my money, bitch. <laughs> it, it's this is, I think this is very, again, very well observed. I love right? it. Like, yeah. I don't know how to hard ass somebody like <laughs> one of my all time favorite, like little character beats and anything is in the, uh, Grant Morrison, new X-Men thing where he's they they have the you men who are dissecting mutants and he's like okay you cut off his head and we're gonna get his <laughs> eyes to shoot cyclops beams he's like i'm not gonna cut off a guy's head <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about like i can't do that like it's just really obs- well like I, i'm not gonna bust in here and shoot these guys this is ridiculous i'm not gonna go pro ice just because i'm in a hard situation come on yeah what am i serpico <laughs> like this is ridiculous um he's practicing you know, this, uh, he's just like, I will shoot you. I'm fucking loco. Uh, the male lady shows up and he's blocking the door. Uh, <laughs> he hides the gun behind him. It's, and you know, he's she's so just nervous. Like, like yeah. you know, <laughs> just, I love the small talk, you know, like you would have with your letter carrier. Like, Oh, it's, it's going to be nice. Jesse's like, yeah. High seventies. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's so tweaked out. Uh, it's real fun. It's a weird comedy episode. Like as bleak as this episode is, it, it's really sad, but there are funny bits Yeah, in it. Like, yeah. Great episode. Uh, he eventually smashes his way uh, through the window and slips in and he gets in, uh, immediately falls down on some garbage on the floor. Yeah. Uh, it is a disgusting house. It is really hard to look at. Like yeah. my house isn't ready for company right now, but like this is next level. Uh, you know, like I don't know. We <laughs> this is a common point on something awful. We both of us really uh, trawled the goon, the goon layers. Yeah, yeah, love yeah. a goon layer. It's a, it's real good motivation to get just fucking dust. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just uh, at least a you know, or pick some stuff up. It is yeah. disgusting. Yes, you know. Um, you know, he picks up the, this, he has his basket of inhalers. There's a two liter bottle with like something. So it, it looks like, like some like dip, like dip spit, but it's not enough. Dip, yeah. Uh, dip spit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really, really gross. Uh, here's a thud from elsewhere. He thinks it's maybe a uh, spooge and a uh, companion, mm-hmm. but, uh, so he gets his gun ready, but it's a little kid. Uh, the set dressing on this little kid is great. Oh, it's so good. You know? He looks, he looks so good. Like the filthy underwear. Mm-hmm. Uh, dirty hair unkept and uh 
one of my favorite things about it is that he doesn't um react to jesse no like, no this house is full of this kind of shit and again uh you know i always try to keep my powder dry on this but you know i grew up in a house with people who did drugs mm-hmm. every once in a while there's just a weird guy yeah uh, that happened to me all the time like mm-hmm. I, it wasn't this kind of gross of a house but the i am unsupervised and here's a guy who's like no no i'm a friend of your parents mm-hmm. uh coming in to kill time to eventually do drug things mm-hmm. happened yeah. uh, to me um, I was a little older than this, but this is a very well observed way that like a kid can become enculturated to like anything. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Just, uh, it's, it's not even worth remarking upon. He wants to, you know, he's up, he wants to watch TV, you know, yeah. it, 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 it's not even, he, he's not even distressed, distressed that he has been left alone. When we say kid, we're not talking about like, oh, he's, you know, 10 years old. Like he's not doing skateboard tricks. This is like, no. it appears to be a four year old child. I am really bad at clocking the ages of kids, but he's very young. Yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, he just turns on the TV like it's nothing, just sets next to Jesse. Uh, and it's turned into the sword sales show uh, where they sell <laughs> swords. Uh, two guys yell at each other about how low sword prices can go. <laughs> no, 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 just because this is less than $10. Don't let anybody make you think. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I sell one sword a year. I'm good. I sell no swords a year. I'm better. <laughs> the county t- pays me not to sell swords. Um, I, just, I swords. love the line just talking about the wakazashi and the tanto. In yeah, the deal. <laughs> into the deal. Yeah, like just uh, buying a fucking samurai sword. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jesse uh, asks, you know, where his parents are. He doesn't respond. You know, you think he's he's nonverbal. Yeah. You know, at first, uh, Jesse goes, "Hey, my name's Diesel." <laughs> I <Like>, guess <he's laughs> picking up the thing, which I love. Uh, tries to switch the channel, but it only gets the sword. Uh, <laughs> that is channel. so funny. It's really like, good. He, he just flips through it. It's the only one that uh, comes in clear. It's all sword <laughs> network. It's the sword TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesse, you know, asks like, "Hey, where's, where's your parents gonna get back?" And the kid just goes, "I'm hungry." And it's like a heartbreaking <laughs> line. Like, yeah, the kid is being reduced to something animalistic mm-hmm. by his, his living circumstances, right? By like, neglect. Yeah, by neglect. Like this, uh, I kept in my head. I kept calling them neglectorinos from that <laughs> Simpsons episode, which is insensitive, but that's. He's, he's a consummate neglectorino. Yeah. You know, uh, it's uh, really sad. It <laughs> is heartbreaking. Yeah. You know? And like, yeah. and, I mean, it's probably going to be out of the frying pan into the fire, you know, probably oh, good yeah. to get away from, but like the, not a great future. Waits we, for this weirdly, kid. the best thing that's going to happen to him in his life happens in this episode. Yes. Yeah. Like, it's not like being a, a you know, going for, to foster homes and stuff is like a glamorous life, mm-hmm. but you know, there's also you can go too far the other way. Like there are probably homes that'd be better to be removed from. Yeah. And if yeah. any of them are that it's this, mm-hmm. you know, oh. Oh. um, over to the B storyline, this, you know, Skylar is checking her, uh, answering machine messages. You know, Marie yep. left a message wishing Walt luck, uh, on his first day back. Give us yep. a little bit of, uh, you know, exposition here. Um, and then Gretchen calls, uh, Oh, and leaves yep. a message saying like, Hey, you thinking about you guys? I'm in town. I'm down from Santa Fe. Uh, and Skylar it, takes this opportunity to pick her up and thank her for the money and pour her heart out as she, you know, is grateful. Yeah. It's grateful. Like it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Gretchen is confused by this, but Skylar doesn't pick it up. Right. You know what's happening. Gretchen is, is just being quiet here. It takes her uh, for being modest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's a, it's pretty deft. Yeah. You know, this whole little bit. It's very plausible. Uh, Skylar says, you know, I hope we can get together. And Gretchen says, how about this afternoon? Mm-hmm. You know, she wants to get to the bottom of this. Right. Uh, we cut over to Walt uh, giving a lecture about carbon mm-hmm. uh, here. Uh, just I, whenever I see a lecture that doesn't very ham handedly tie into the themes of an episode. Uh huh. Pr- pretty into it. <laughs> yep. You know, and just like, all right, man. It's just the important thing is he's doing a chemistry lesson. It's not a darkly ironic chemistry lesson. It's just a <laughs> chemistry lesson. It's It's showing something else other than how clever the writers are, right? Like it's showing yeah. that he's got his kind of verb back. He's real happy to be back at work. Mm-hmm. He seems, yeah. you know, contrast us to the last time we saw him in the classroom. Yes. You know, where he is very clearly going through the motions mm-hmm. and stuff. He's into it. Yeah. Uh, here. Uh, it, it, I, 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 while that is true, I also think that this is drawing a contrast between the, the excitement of his other life and then coming here and just like, eh, let's talk some, let's talk about carbon. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's drawing it for the viewer, but Walt seems yeah, happy to me. He does. Yes. You know, uh, to this, yeah. like, it's not, uh, you, you could do this. You could draw that contrast in a really ham handed way by just making him like, you know, the, 
woe is me. This has none of the excitement of killing Tuco. Yeah. Yeah. You he's know? not. Yeah. He's not doing not... that at all. He's really happy to be out of the house. And also his house is a fucking nightmare uh-huh. right now. Like his, you know, it, it would make, this would be a huge reprieve. Yes. Being here. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing that is, you know, in line with the themes here, <laughs> you know, he's talking about carbon, um, uh, um, and, you know, he talks about like, okay, well, we'll talk about how about the guy who invented carbon and tells the story about the, about the scientist who, you know, patented or, you know, created the pro the, the process for manufacturing diamonds back in the fifties. And, you know, this isn't pertinent detail, but he kind of says, you know, do you, do you know, you know, what they rewarded him with, you know, for making millions and millions of dollars for GE, you know, they gave him a $10 yeah. savings bond. And just, yep. you can just tell he's got all this venom in his heart because he's only sharing that detail because of his own background. Yeah. Yeah. And th- that's where it comes a little like obvious foreshadowing. Yeah, yeah. You know, he just happens to be saying that at the same time Gretchen is thinking about uh-huh. <laughs> exposing him. His spidey sense went off <laughs> to say something that echoes it. Yeah. Um, the, uh, he, the teacher, Principal Carmen, uh, who's made of carbon, uh, mm-hmm. sticks around and tells Walt, like, listen, you can come to me with anything. She's concerned. Mm-hmm. Him. This is uh, on the list of the most important plots of Breaking Bad. We got Marie's theft. Uh huh. We got flirting with the principal. Mm-hmm. Uh, huge. Absolutely yeah. huge. Uh, what's the third one I'm forgetting? Uh, there, there, there's these plots that just are fucking incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, DJ Roomba. It might be DJ Roomba. <laughs> there's a, but this ends up being a weird, doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Uh, very quickly. They excise Walt's wrapping up his, his Eros and, and the mm-hmm. Thanatos, you know, yeah, yeah. they, they get rid of the sexual element mm-hmm. of it early on. It's something they lean on in the first two seasons. though quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Walt is feeling flirted with this will not go mm-hmm. anywhere. No, no. Uh, well, he'll try to make it go somewhere, but it is yeah, yeah. N- n- self-destructive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, him and Flynn are leaving, or, you know, going to leave school and they get to the Aztec and there is one of Walt's missing person posters stuck to the windshield, but it has been, you know, modified and says, I'm missing my pants. It's got a little speech bubble that says I'm buck naked, you know, yeah. like, the, as as would happen flynn wants to see it because you know he is taking it personally and walt is trying to hide it from him yeah yeah i uh, just you know don't worry about it yeah you know uh we come back to the smooch house you know uh jesse made him a marshmallow fluff sandwich on a hot dog bun yep. incredibly well observed struggle meal food yeah yep. struggle meal uh and jesse starts playing peekaboo with him giving the episode's title and, and coming back later yeah. Uh, then he hears uh, Spooge and Lady Spooge coming inside, arguing. Uh, she has lost meth, is yes. the, the implication. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he does not want the kid around to see what is going to you know happen. So he takes him to you know, to his bedroom and says, hey, you need to stay here. Right. Yep. And he comes, <laughs> Jesse sneaks up behind him and bashes Spooge over the head and, yep. you know, holds him up. <laughs> I um, love Lady Spooge's scream. Uh, God, it's so fucking. I know. I know. I said this last episode, right? Uh-huh. Uh, she is such a monster in this. Yep. Like, and they're doing it on purpose. Like, I'm not commenting about her appearance. They t- they talk about this on the the podcast as well. Like, just perfectly normal actress. The makeup people make these. The makeup people and her acting talent. Yes. Turn her into a bog hag. <laughs> like, yep. God, is she a fucking effective bog hag? Extremely. I don't the, believe like, in banshees. <laughs> in, a, in a general sense but I, this makes me kind of believe in banshees you know well, well but the, but the scream like the way that it is one sustained just ah. two two two, two, two like two flat notes yeah. um oh it's so good it's it's really really the, the performance is incredible on, yeah. on both the spooges yes uh, they, they do an incredible job the spooge family yeah. even the little spooges do great you know, yeah. mop up you know <laughs> The smoochlet. Uh, oh, the smoochlet. Yeah. Oh, don't the, say uh, the mop ne- up. Come on. The, the neglectorino <laughs> also mops up the awardees. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We cut over to, to Walt and Flynn in the car. And uh, this, I think this is really sweet. This is good. Uh, this like, is, this, this know, is good dadding. Yeah. Yeah. This is great dadding. Like, do you know who left the flyer? I got an idea. He's like, all right, here's what we do. You point him out. I'm going to bag him up. We take him out to the desert. <laughs> Bury him out to his neck. Fire ants. You know, it, it's like great dadding. <laughs> Really yeah, sweet. although with, with the amount of desert killing that happens in this, oh, there yeah. is like a fun echo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just it's just a cute little, and this is going to happen to Walt, right? You know, or Walt is going to do this rather. 
uh, uh-huh. put somebody in a black bag in the desert pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, Walt Jr. plays along, which I love. Yeah. You know, scorpions. <laughs> and Walt's like, scorpions are good. Yeah. Just making really it into, like just, you know, just, let's just do, you know, have, have fun with each other. It's, it, it's yeah. a good moment. Um, uh, Walt pulls up to the house and is mortified to see nothing more than Gretchen's Bentley uh, yeah. there in the driveway. Uh, great gray matter vanity plate. <laughs> you know, just, it's just the worst possible thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, they go inside Flynn. Thanks Gretchen for what she's done for the dad. You know, uh, he says, you know, we can find a way to repay you. He's like, Oh, we, you know, we don't, we, we don't, you don't have to, we don't want to hear that. You know, <laughs> she's still confused. She knows something's afoot. Yes. You know, Gretchen's yeah. no dummy. No, no. Yeah. And with Walt there, she's uncomfortable. She wants to get out yeah. of there. You know, did he, he is the one who is prosecuting this lie. Right. Yeah. Uh, and you know, she's like, Oh, I need to be traffic. And Walt's kind of in her way. And he, he lets her go. And then he goes, ah, oh, I'm such an idiot. I should walk her to her car to, <laughs> to go have a private meeting. You know, uh, he, you know, Hey, she goes, Hey yourself. What he, he started trying to ask. He's trying to dig for information. He, he leads with, what did you <laughs> like? He yeah. immediately, there's no nicety there. Yeah. It's just, and she just like, Hey, we need to talk. And then she just pulls away without saying anything. Yep. Yeah. No good. Uh, Jesse is interrogating the spooges about the money. <clears throat> Uh, and you cannot get a straight answer out of these, uh, monster junkies. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they're, they're not cogent. No, you know? no. Spooge is talking about like, I might have a concussion, man. You need to take me to the hospital. Yeah. You know, sub- you hit me really hard, man. <laughs> it's like, you, you so, held sub- up my dude at knife port. And like, you know, you know this is not. <laughs> yeah. You know. You're the one <laughs> I, I'm only escalating from where you started, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Subdural hematoma. He says, yeah. Yeah. A uh, little uh, like uh, the wiki says uh, Spooger's actor, you just kind of just uh, uh, kind of played him as maybe he was a paramedic who, you know, mm. got hooked on drugs and stuff. You ah. know, fell there. That's why he knows these words, that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jesse has them turn out their pockets, hand over their shoes and everything. So we can search them. And they say they're shot at all. He doesn't believe them. It's too much yeah. to shoot in such a short time. Yeah. And then he, but he knows how a meth head thinks. Both of you mm-hmm. pull it out of your butts right now. I'm going to grab a flashlight and a pair of pliers and go exploring. I would call that bluff. I was like, have, uh, you, have you seen me? Yeah, <laughs> Look the, around. Uh, you do not need to go. Like, I'm not the man you want to lose your watch in. Uh, <laughs> if if, if <laughs> yeah, this is not a, a wrist deep kind of spooch. Uh, should we put a warning at the front of this episode? That is the character's name. I cannot stress this enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, I don't like saying it either. Um, <laughs> You know, they pull out condoms out of their ass. You yeah. Know, uh, Spooge has the crystal meth and Lady Spooge has the heroin. And, Division uh, of labor. <laughs> Division of labor, man. Um, he's like, you know, where's the rest of the meth? And uh, Spooge says, you know, she lost it. The skank lost it. Uh, and this is the foreshadowing of the skank. You know, don't call me a skank. She you shrieks. Don't, you don't want to call her a skank. <laughs> no, no. Uh, this is, uh, again, fucking brutal stuff uh, the way this episode plays mm-hmm. this is a lot like a really excellent tabletop campaign in a way this is going to make it this is going to sound crazy but what i mean is this feels like it's being plotted by an excellent gm who is introducing complications yeah just throwing a curveball out like okay yeah. here's the kid yeah even the kid being there in the first place is excellent like what yeah. would be a straightforward crime thing but then kid comes out you know mm-hmm. what do you do jesse like th- this is such a good you know, my favorite drama takes characters and puts them through the fucking ringer, mm-hmm. you know, and this is a continuing series of escalating events, yeah. like problems, like really interesting problems for Jesse to solve. Yeah. You know, so the, and, the kid and everything reveals character. Like it's all, they, they go out of their way to reveal these people as moral and physical monsters. Yes. Incredibly, uh, effectively. So like the kid walks out and lady speech goes, come on, baby. Come here, and then holds over and just holds him as a shield, and it's disgusting. It's it, it's the the like my skin crawls when I see yeah. that compared with Jesse. So com- I mean, we mm. glided over it, but when he put her put him in the room, you see the lock on the outside of the door. Mm-hmm. He, he draws attention to it before, but they show it subtly before yeah. that. Like, good God! Like, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah, it makes me feel like I'm crawling with spiders. Yeah, you just you, you get the sense that this is one of the, if not the only times she has said, you know, come here, baby, let me comfort you physically. It's grotesque. And then she makes eye contact mm-hmm. with Jesse, like, all right, I raise you, you know, I had yep. to pull something out of my ass. Are you going to kill this kid? Disgusting. Like, yeah. again, just very, very effective. Here's my prop, you know, the prop yeah. that you just out of being a decent human being have shown, you know, 
concerned for, care for. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Really, really rough shit. Yeah. So he, he's like, I can't shoot this kid. So he says, listen, uh, you're never getting high in this town again. I'm making it my mission. You're not going to get any smack, no dope, no nothing, you know? And this gets them to talk, to break. (laughs) Like they, they need this. It's a very good move on his part, actually. Yeah. It's, it's, it's leverage, right? Yeah. They pulled a kid. He pulled the only thing they care about more than their kid. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, he, the spooge says, you know, we have your money plus interest. It's in the backyard. Come on, man. No fooling. Yeah. Um, so they go out to the backyard where spooge has an ATM, uh, on a hand truck. He's boosted it. Yeah. You know, and Jesse to get his money is going to have to help them break it open. Uh, and I like Jesse's kind of response at seeing this, like, yo, that's my bank. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Why would he care? <laughs> Spooch kind of has a point. He says that yeah. FIDC insured you. It's a victimless crime. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily victimless, but also it's not going to hurt Jesse. Yeah. I, just, I love that's my bank. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very civic of Jesse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good citizen. Uh, you know, Jesse says, where'd you get it? And he's like, oh man, we just got it real in and out. There's this a bodega across town. I really like this scene. Yeah. Um, Cause th- these guys are scum. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, you can, you can argue the virtues of portraying, drug addicts characters in general but also drug addicts as unrepentant yeah like absolute shit heels uh i think as long as it's a sometimes treat it's good yes. you know like there really are people like this and i think this these characters the spooges uh mm-hmm. fit a really important part in the show's cosmology and ecosystem of showing what walt and jesse are doing yes you, know, yeah, you can that. have hank at a barbecue be like man meth it's really bad news Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's not the same thing as this visceral feeling, you know, of what addiction can do. Yeah. You know, to a, to a humanity, like to a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, the fa- the fact that these two are so dangerous and so degraded that ultimately one takes out the other and yeah. that redounds to Jesse's benefit. Um, yep. Yeah, I don't know. Just the, the, the that that it just keeps rolling and you know yeah. continues having a cost. Yeah, they're fucking, yeah. you know, yeah, they're liars. He's trying to play it off like it's nothing, you know, mm-hmm. but they ended up killing a guy. They show the thing where they stole the the thing and it's really like good editing. You mm-hmm. cut over and then you see the blood and then you see the body. Yeah. You know, they killed the clerk to get the mm-hmm. the ATM. Uh there. Yeah. I thought this might have been uh the janitor. This might have been oh. Hugo for a second. Yeah, the um, it's either Wikipedia or IMDb that says that it's the same. It's the guy who helped tow them uh, in Cats in the Bag. Got gotcha. you. That's yeah. a, that's a little Magnolia for me, but I'll yeah. I'll accept it. <laughs> I didn't want to be the janitor either. Like, no, this no. should have just been a guy. The yeah, coincidences they're, they're, are piling up. <laughs> there could be more than eight people in the world. I yeah. yeah, and especially a big major city. Yeah. So they're like, we have to get in this ATM. You know, uh, Spooge is whacking with a sledgehammer. Jesse's like, I, come on, man. You said you've boosted these all the time. And Lady Spooge is like, he's boosted six of them, but he's never gotten one open. Yeah. And this is a snipe, right? Yep. And he snipes back, calling her a skank. At this yep. point, if you if, if that is what you're call, if that's your go-to, you know, if you think so lowly of this person, then what does it say about you that you are with them still? Well, you, they don't, uh, it's not a, you know, it's not a healthy relationship. They're just joined no. because it's easier for them to get drugs together oh, yeah, like, yeah. It, again it, it's showing this lack of humanity that yeah. that's a human concern you just mentioned yes they're beyond <laughs> human concerns they're hollow yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, it's it's gross you know it's it's yeah. all skin crawlingly awful so he's just calling yeah. her skank 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 so childish yeah uh jesse's like fuck this shit just get back on it you know mm-hmm. uh he asks where the kid is and uh lady skank says what are you asking me for that's Uh, just the blackest comedy (laughs) yeah ridiculous Uh, do you think my child's whereabouts are my business my yeah i I, that's not my concern that's not my business uh jesse goes to the kid's room and comforts him and comes back and says yeah nice parenting you know what kind of mother are you and she says give me a hit and i'll be any kind of mother you want yeah and just repulsive gotta go (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, Jesse grabs the hammer and to get to work. Like I have to get out of this situation. <laughs> yeah, this is like, this is too much. This isn't my job, but this is the quickest way out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so cut over to a restaurant uh, for just more skin crawling. Uh, Walt is there with Gretchen, uh, and he's just pumping her for information. Like, okay, so what have you told Elliot? Have you have you told him you know what what you've learned? And she says not yet. Uh, and you know. 
he is initially he initially rejects this but is you know and c- comes around to it like okay yeah i'd probably do the same yeah you know uh ends up ends up kind of making making sense of it um you know he apologizes for this you know it's unfortunate i apologize <laughs> and she says you have to tell me why yeah. and he balks at it like i don't owe you that that's not really the issue mm-hmm. you know uh this isn't your concern uh i'll clear this up with my family you let me deal with this uh he said she says i i owe an explanation he goes i don't owe that to you mm-hmm. i've apologized twice now i humbly apologize that's what i owe you three, three times. times i keep apologizing yeah uh you know she says like this this is ridiculous i don't get it mm-hmm. you know like we can still pay for that that offer still stands why would you reject it out of pride and then say you're taking it yeah there has you know? to be something more happening here yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened to you like this mm-hmm. isn't you, um, you know, s- similar kind of shades of like, why are you like this? Yes. Jesse's parents, right. Yeah. You know. you know, just the, like hitting him with the distance, right? Yep. Like, you know, even outside of where he's gone since the beginning of the show, like you know, they've not had anything to do with each other for years. Right. Yep. Yeah. This is not what he wants to hear. And I love the false start. On, yeah. on this, when he, you know, starts to, you know, to, to take that back to her and then he's like, well, what, what would you know about me, Gretchen? And then this is, this gets around to, you know, kind of what's at the, at the heart of this, you know, that I should beg while you and Elliot wave your checkbook around like some kind of magic wand that'll make me forget that how you cut me out. Yeah. And, you know, we start getting around to, there is not a shared reality on this. Yeah. I, lo- I love how- her response to that. Like. I thought that many times when somebody just says something that feels fucking nuts. This can't be you know, how like, you see it. Like you're, yeah, you're fucking with me. Yeah. Yeah. Th- th- this is so off base from my lived experience Yeah, that it may as well be like inventing a new color. You know, he says, Oh, you know, you, you're always the perfect picture of innocence. And she's like, no, you left us. Like you walked away. You left me the 4th of July weekend. You know, I go up to my room and you're packing. You're not talking. You walked away. You abandoned us there. Uh, mm-hmm. And he then goes for a cheap shot. He doesn't have a counter to this. Nope. Walt is not good at taking responsibility. If somebody hasn't noticed that, <laughs> but it's, you know, and just, oh, just a little rich girl adding to her millions. Uh, you get this economic resentment yeah. from their upbringing. One of the things I love about the show uh, is that we don't get almost anything about Walt's childhood yeah, or yeah. his family. We know that he, uh, you know, he'll have a, kind of a strained relationship with his mother. We never meet her. Mm -hmm. You know, but you get the sense that this is a chip that he's had on his shoulder for a long time. Yes. You know, it's not new to him resenting uh, these class issues. You know, the the way to which Breaking Bad is a class, you know, the the study of what wealth and equity can do to a person Mm -hmm. drive someone to be is like one of the facets of it. And this has been baked into the character from the start. Yes. Yeah. 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 And she says, you know, I don't even know what to say to you. I don't know where to begin. And then she says this and it's really drawn out. You know, I feel so sorry for you, Walt. Yeah. You know, and I, I mean, I know like, what, what, what's, what's your read on that? Like, is she specifically trying to like get at him or it, does she actually feel this? Is she oh, saying like, this in she, a genuine way without him? understanding? Yeah. Like, is she trying to hurt him by saying, I feel so sorry for oh, you? Oh no, I, I don't think so. I, I think Gretchen's yeah. pretty innocent. Yeah. It, in this, um, basically based on what we know with Walt. Mm-hmm. You know, and and how he is. I think that she's being genuine. Like if yeah. I if I put myself in her position of somebody doing this and mm-hmm. having this uh you know, not taking responsibility, holding this like ancient grudge mm-hmm. with that shit, like that is pathetic. Uh, yeah. it li- elicits pathos. Yes. You know? Yeah. So uh, I I I pretty I come to, I come down on that too. I think that there was no way for her to know specifically how raw this nerve would be on his part. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not her responsibility to know, Mm -hmm. uh, really like she did, they did an incredibly kind thing, Mm -hmm. uh, and we're just slapped for it. You know, I haven't read discourse around this. I would not be, uh, and I'm not definitely not accusing you of this uh, Mm -hmm. because, you know, we're on the same page about this, but I wonder if there are people who do think she's being manipulative and everything. And it's part of the grander breaking bad sexism alliance, you know, of (laughs) women hurting innocent, innocent, poor Walter White, (laughs) you know, I, I just, this, he's the villain here. Yeah, he plays. Yeah. It's a it's a weird uh, strategy thing. The the way that he plays out in this episode, it's really deft from a chess perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, it's canny. He's very cunning in this episode, but he's not good. 
No. You know, he's 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 real evil in this episode. <laughs> um he responds, you know, fuck you. Yeah. Uh and and she leaves. This is one of the uh there another production thing that popped through on the podcast. In the first season they would duck swears uh, mm-hmm. on TV. And then uh the network said people complained about it, so they stopped doing it and they started only having a limited number of swears they could use. Yeah. Um, They realize, you know, they don't like it that way. They'd rather have the duck. They're like, it's silly for a character like Tuco to say screw instead of fuck stuff. like Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vince Gilligan had to beg the network to let them duck this on TV as opposed to making it like fudge you, you know, or what I, you know, (laughs) screw you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you know, I just, I have a very distinct recollection of like, okay, episode called IFT. All right. What are we looking at here? And then it gets to the line and then I, Ted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, the ducking sucks. Yeah. Uh, and they, they really rightly point out in the thing, like, you know, it is uh TV is real and standards and practices are kind of a thing, but also mm-hmm. this art to future proof it, it's going to live mostly on DVD and streaming yeah. in, you know, in, in context in which this shit doesn't matter. Yes. You know, so do you, do you go for the artistic, you know, the best artistic product you can make, or do you, uh, how much do you toe the line for compromises for the medium? For- yeah, initial broadcast yeah. kind of stuff. And yeah. the right answer is, you know, play, play you have for the to future. do one and it'd be great yeah. if you didn't have to do the other. Yeah. You know, or if you didn't have to. Yep. Yeah. So time has passed. You know, she gets up and walk, walks away. Time passes yep. and it's nighttime and Jesse is still at um, the Spook Break Hotel. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the others are asleep. It's just him pounding at the CTM. Uh, and the kid comes out. He wants to play. He wants more peekaboo. Uh, and Jesse does it. He has a soft mm-hmm. spot for the kid. As is happening, Lady Spooge wakes up and brains Jesse with a bottle. Right uh, in, in front, front of, of the kid. kid. Yeah. Uh, he wakes up later uh, as she is grabbing, like not very much later. You mm-hmm. know, he's just, he was just had his not his, his wind taken out of him because yeah. you know, she's yeah. now on him grabbing his gun. Yeah. You know, he's like, I'll show you a bad mother. Tell me how to parent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is what a good mother does. Uh, she wakes up Mr. Spooge. Uh, you know, gives him the gun. He pulls a, a knife and it's like, mm-hmm. Oh, you're the big man now. Are you? No, yeah. you know, you like they're going to be up summarily execute Jesse and they're undone uh, as we're going to find out by their ad- addiction. Mm-hmm. You know, they grab the uh, meth condom back. Yeah. Them being on all these drugs is basically going to stop them from coup de growing Jesse and living. <laughs> I mean, not living, but you know, being well, victorious yeah. in this conflict. Yes. No, their, their, their priority is getting their hits. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Walt comes home and grabs a beer and I love this, you know, Skylar, yeah, this is great. should I ask you where you've been? Never mind. We're long past that. I suppose. <laughs> like, I, I love, uh, this is really all the acting on here is great. You know, she says mm-hmm. that perfectly justified Walt goes Skylar. Like at that point, mm-hmm. like after everything he's, you know, it, it, I'm sympathetic to his position, even if he put himself in it. Yes. The idea of no. like, I, I can't do this. Not on, you know? not on, not right now, please. Not now. I am so fucking worried about this. And then she says, she drops the bomb, like Gretchen called, we need to talk. Yeah. Uh, and just the, the fear on his face. Yeah. You know? Cause like, okay, where are we at? Because like, what could she possibly know? The, uh, and he's, again, he's doing chess master shit, which I think is what causes the breaking bad misogyny brigade to, to sympathize with him more. She mm-hmm. says, you know, their money's being cut off. And as opposed to saying, assuming that is because Gretchen told the lie, he does the smart thing and says, what did she say exactly? Mm-hmm. You know, he, <laughs> he gets more information before moving forward, which is very yeah. tactically sound. Yes. You know, which is, you know, she just said that they can't continue um, and wished us the best, Yeah, you know? And Skylar is like, so what do you know about this? The visit was perfectly, perfectly fine. It got weird when you showed up and then you disappeared forever. Yeah. So it, w- what's going on? Incredible, uh, quick thinking. Oh yeah. You know, the, the, you, know, the, you know, the tactical side of this is really good. Walt says, so I was, you know, you asked where I was. I drove up to Santa Fe, uh, to meet with Gretchen and Elliot. Uh, you know, Gretchen didn't have the nerve to tell you, uh, they're, they're broke. You know, they, they use a lot of business phraseology, you know, cash poor, leverage, quarterly decline, things like that. <laughs> you know, we all know they're not immune. The economy's yeah. in the toilet, Fannie Mae, some such. <laughs> I, I, love, love him. I love him just doing great recession mad libs yeah. <laughs> to get out of this. <laughs> the, uh, you know, things of that nature. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so on and so forth. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, uh, uh, and this is accomplishes so much for Walt. Oh my God. It's so like it's, perfect. Like, it's, I it's mean, a perfect storm for him. Like he's in turning trash into lemonade, you know, he, uh-huh. uh, it, it covers up the, the initial lie. It covers mm-hmm. up the lie of where he's been. It also gets sympathy from Skylar again. Like they have a moment of physical connection. Yeah. You know, yeah, she, them being kind of combined hands. by this pro yeah, like they're they're united against this problem. Uh-huh. You know, that they have. Uh yeah. and they're talking about something they both have an interest in. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's this we she grabs his hand, he comforts her in yeah. a uh a, a matrimonial way. You know? Yeah. It's um uh, and and like the other thing that it accomplishes, uh, you know, so the first lie uh, save face for him uh, with the uh, kind of nagging side effect of kind of building them up mm-hmm. and making them, yeah. you know, generous, uh, making them seem like real generous or whatever. And, you know, like, okay, well, I'm going to yeah. lie about these people. If we're not going to have anything to do with them. Yeah. Yeah. Well now here's what I can do. You know, I can make, you know, just if I'm going to lie, well, they, they, they suck. Like, oh, they're, yeah. you know, everything isn't as great as we think as it is, you know, old painty can Ned, right? It's real <laughs> old painty can Ned. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, just, <laughs> and his face when he realizes he gets away with it. Yeah. And just the, you know, this turnaround, I fucking love this. You know, there's this guy who's like, oh, she could have just told me herself. And Walt says, mm, they're prideful people, you know? Like just yeah. ooh, the way that he turns this around and diminishes them with this yeah. fresh new lie that also serves the purpose for right now. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and Skylar's never going to like talk to them like, Hey, how's your bankruptcy going? It, it, yeah. Making it a verboten subject, mm-hmm. you know, it, it is very deft. Like it's a, it's yeah. a really deft little bit of plotting yeah. in this, uh, you know, Walt says, Hey, we're going to get through this. They already paid for most of the treatment, you know, so he shores up the future concerns. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they touch, he puts his, his arm around her shoulder and she holds his hand. It looks like Skylar is onto it. Cause she goes, and yet she still drives a Bentley. Uh, and he's thinking, you can see the wheels turning in her head, mm-hmm. you know, and, and Walt covers up with us, you know, oh, they're keeping up appearances. I don't know. Yeah. You know, and, and it doesn't end on that. There's like a beat where like he mm-hmm. looks ahead and then he just kind of glances over to see mm-hmm. like how, how it's landing. How, it's- how is this working? Is this, you buying this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's really really well done, I, and Great I love stuff. how the I love how this parallels uh, what happens with Jesse here. Both of them come out come out smelling like roses, kind yeah. of because on of accident. other people. Yeah, on accident, basically. <laughs> I like this too. I think the ATM opening is the single silliest thing that happened in this season. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, <laughs> it, it's very very cartoony. Uh, it's it's like when a safe drops on Yosemite Sam's head, and then he opens the safe. <laughs> it's that except in a serious show about parental neglect. <laughs> no. Oh man. I, 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 I don't know. I like that goofiness. I, I like when things are heightened. <laughs> it, it's a, that, that's a, it doesn't ruin the episode. This is a masterpiece yeah. episode to me. I just, it just feels very unplausible to me. Yeah. Um, Jesse wakes up to the sound of a drill. Spooge has, uh, the ATM tipped over on a chair. Yeah. Uh, and he's drilling into the bottom of it. Like, yeah. you know, if you were making a safe, where'd you put the weak spot? You put it on the bottom and, and Mrs. Spooge, who is all hair went out yeah. nowhere. I'd make it strong. <laughs> I, I could make that. a safe. I used to dance. Yeah, just, <laughs> I used to dance. Lee, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Lee Spooge is like, you know, I took too much heroin. It's bringing me down. Can I have some of that meth to even out? <laughs> he says, you lost your meth skank, <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> and she's like, and she's like, I'm trying to take the high road here. I would Are appreciate you an apology, do right? Yeah, you know, she says, like, you know, for calling me a skank. Yeah, and he's like, no skank. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to give you an apology. Yeah, and she yeah. says, I ain't no skank. And yeah. he probably should have listened to her there instead of just repeating skank ass skank over and over again. Because yeah. she says, I ain't no skank. She kind of walks over, kisses her hand. And then pushes the ATM so it tips and crushes his head. Yeah. He gets his head smashed in. Yes. There, like the beetle in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, there. Uh, and, and he, uh, another like fun kind of production val- uh, detail, him shaking after the ATM hit him uh, mm-hmm. is uh, a cool, like, you know, he's injured trauma mm-hmm. thing. It's also what stuntmen do to show that they are. okay. Oh, that they're good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's it just kind of both like the stunt man who was under there. I mm-hmm. uh, did that. Nice. So it kind of fulfills both purposes. Huh? Uh, uh, she grabs the meth. Like again, uh, the addiction first. 
Yes. You know? Doesn't he like Jesse doesn't even exist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesse uh, gets up during this whole time when he's been watching it, he has been reaching for a, uh, a hacksaw yes. to try to, to defend himself when she's about to push it. He breaks. He's like, no, 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 don't, 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 you know, mm-hmm. tries to stop it. And she doesn't even notice. She doesn't no. Care. no. And he's losing his mind. Someone's died here. This is now a murder scene. Mm-hmm. You know, so he starts wiping everything down to get his prints off it. Yeah. Uh, oh. And as he's wiping down the ATM, the front of it opens and he grabs his money. You know, like ATMs do. Yeah. You just got to give them a good Fonzie hip check and they just open <laughs> up and spill money everywhere. Hey, Fonzie rules work. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, lady Spooge has, has gone to sleep on the couch. You mm-hmm. know, uh, he calls 911, leaves the phone off the hook. It's again, very slick. Yeah. Um, and he's going to leave and then say things set better of it. He's like, I yeah. can't let that kid see that. No, no. You know, like the, the kid would have been fine. The police would have showed up, mm-hmm. but he's trying to protect the kid from more trauma. Yes. You know, he, him having that like road to Damascus moment of like, no, no, no I have to go back. Right. Is right. one of those essential character things. It's putting obviously. himself at risk. Like, yeah, huge risk. Yeah. He doesn't want to be there when the cops show up. No. How do you explain that, man? <laughs> but he uh, goes, goes into the bedroom and says, Hey, we're going to play a game of peekaboo. I need you to cover your eyes. You, you, you play peekaboo with me, you know, cover yeah. them and don't, you know, don't open them until we get outside and take, takes them out, puts them on the porch, puts a blanket over them. You know, and says, mm-hmm. hey, not going back inside is part of the game. Yep. Uh, and then he, the, the cops are coming. He knows what what's the future. And he says, you have a good life. Rest your life, kid. Yeah. And and walks away as quick as he can as the sirens are closing in uh, after yeah. taking a bunch of money from the ATM. Yeah. Getting his money back. Uh, and it ends there. We don't get a uh, any fallout here, which is no. unusual. Usually it would set up like the next thing. But mm-hmm. they just know this is a big enough climax to end the episode on. A man's head was crushed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a great ending, yeah. you know, for it. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, great episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of, one of the highlights of season two, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, no, mm-hmm. I don't know that I have any more sum up thoughts other than like, this is like weirdly a place setting episode <laughs> yes. to a degree. Like it's setting things up, you know, Walt has reached a new status quo at home, uh, you know, re- re- uh, been refreshed on the lies a little bit. Uh, yeah, he's, he's back at school. Eight, nine minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, this is going to have a huge impact. You know, it's going to embolden Jesse, right? Because he's going to get a bunch of street cred from this, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, people think that he is the psycho, uh, even though he, you know, doesn't kill anybody until the end of season four. Yeah, <laughs> or, or, it, it works out for him temporarily. Yeah, yeah. we're going to see both of these things fail as well. Yes, uh, Walt's new status quo crumbled to dust, and when it gets out, that Jesse didn't actually do this. It, there's going to be consequences. Yes. As well. Um, but it does kind of set us up into a new new zone. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it really, really excellent. Some of the little silly bits feel season two-y to me. Yeah, yeah. The um like the the guy at the clerk being the same guy who held him with the tow truck. That's all mm-hmm. Magnolia plane crash shit yeah, that I yeah. think burns off of the show. Um I'm glad that stuff goes away. It's it doesn't ruin anything for me. Mm-hmm. I just don't love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I don't hate it either. Yeah. Um, yeah, great episode. Looking forward to uh, tomorrow. We're going to get Saul pretty soon. We are. No, uh, episode gonna, after next. Yeah. Phenomenal. I uh, cannot wait. <laughs> uh, everybody loves Bob Odenkirk. Yeah. I'm everybody. Uh, <laughs> guy's phenomenal. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, if you, uh, thanks everybody for listening. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. If mm-hmm. you, uh, if you want to support us, the way you can do so is by going to patreon.com slash duckfeed TV and giving us a little bit of money. Five bucks gets you a bunch of extra shows. 10 bucks gives you more. 25 you get to start telling us games to cover uh it is all very good uh, you get access yeah. to slack you can talk about breaking bad talk about whatever you want yeah there yeah. Uh, there's an anime all- channel i don't go in if you, want to talk about <laughs> anime, you can do it yeah, yeah. uh and uh, uh please leave a rating or review if you can yeah we'd really appreciate it uh mm-hmm. huge thanks to gwen who composed yes. our theme song and produces uh episodes edits our episodes now uh, mm-hmm. very very happy to have hired her on yeah uh and i think that's about it I think so. Yeah. Uh, what should they do until next time? Uh, cover your eyes and don't uncover them until we're back.